Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going through exercise 1.28 from the Art of Electronics. In this exercise we need to show that the average power delivered to a RC circuit winds up in the resistor. So the circuit that has been presented to us is this one and it's on figure 1.95 in the Art of Electronics book. The capacitor value in the book is given as 1 microfarad and the resistor value is 1 kilo ohm and the frequency is 60 hertz. There are two ways of answering this question. For the first method, what I'm going to do is replicate the circuit on LT Spice. For the circuit obviously we have a capacitor of 1 microfarad from the question and a resistor of 1 kilo ohm. The frequency of the input is 60 hertz and the amplitude um, is not too important uh, but I'm going to set it as 150 um, peak. So let's now simulate this. And you can see I've basically got three waveforms on this graph. Now let's look at the power consumption across the capacitor and then the resistor. So the current through the capacitor um, on LT Spice will be labelled as IC1 and the voltage across the capacitor is going to be this voltage here. So what I'm going to do now is multiply two together so P equals VI. So I C1 and we basically get the power dissipation across the capacitor. Now if we look at the average power dissipation across the capacitor by control clicking on this, this tells us that the average power dissipation across the capacitor is equal to 1.6 nanowatts and this is mostly down to the resolution or the sampling rate on the signal itself. So if we were to change this 10 to a smaller number, we would get a smaller power dissipation. Now let's look at the power dissipation across the resistor. So obviously the current through the resistor is going to be equal to I R1 and the voltage drop of the resistor is equal to V, V0, which is the node here. So if I multiply those two together, we get the power dissipation of the resistor with the green line here, and the axis is on this side. Now control clicking on this gives us the average power dissipation across the resistor, which this is telling us that it's 1.2. 39 watts. Now let's plug in the numbers that we have from the question. So obviously the only thing that's different is the sine wave input. We had a average power dissipation across the capacitor of 1.6 nanowatts, so obviously a very small number, and we have an average power dissipation of 1.39 watts across the resistor. This is telling us that most of the power dissipation is across the resistor. Now let's plug in the numbers from the question. So obviously the capacitor and the resistor are the same values. However, we need to put in a input voltage of 115 volts RMS. So we can use this um, calculator on all about circuits website, which is quite good. Um, but essentially what you're doing is timesing the RMS value by square root of two. And we get a value of 162.63. I'm going to use. I'm going to plug that into my amplitude. While that's simulating, the second part of the question is asking us to calculate the power dissipation in watts for a series circuit that we've got on the screen now with the voltage levels that I've applied. So we just need to calculate the power dissipation. So previously, we worked out that the power dissipation in the capacitor was very small and that's still the case. 
So we've got now minus two nanowatts on average. I will show you a result with a smaller step size because to show you that it is um, dependent on the step size and it's an error from the simulation. We have a power dissipation of 1.6457 across the resistor, which is the answer to part B of the question. So now let's look at the maths behind this question and how we can show using equations that all the real po average power is dissipated in the resistor. So let's start by looking at the power dissipation in a RC circuit. So the circuit that we've been given is this one here. Obviously we've seen this before in the simulation and the question. The impedance Z of this circuit is equal to the resistance R plus the impedance of the capacitor as they are in series. The impedance of the capacitor is equal to minus J over omega C, where omega is the radial frequency, so that's 2 pi F. Now, if we plug in the impedance of the capacitor into our first equation, so plugging ZC into here, we get the impedance of the full circuit as R minus J over omega C. And our voltage input is equal to V naught. If we want to look at the current through this circuit, we can basically do the voltage input divided by the impedance. The input voltage is V naught and the impedance as we worked out before is equal to R minus J over omega C. Now if we multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate which is R plus J over omega C, we can write out the equation again in this form here. So we've got V naught multiplied by this equation here which is R plus J over omega C and then we multiply the bottom by the same. Now if we carry out the multiplications and expand to long form, we get this equation here. So we've got V naught R plus J over omega C divided by R squared plus J R over omega C minus J R omega C minus J squared divided by omega squared and C squared. Obviously these two cancel each other out and j squared is equal to minus 1. Uh, so we get minus times minus 1, so that turns to a plus. So the whole equation becomes r squared plus 1 over omega squared plus c squared. Now if we rearrange the equation show the, to show the real part and the imaginary part as separate parts, we basically expand out this equation, so we get v naught r plus j r over omega c. And the bottom stays the same, obviously. What I've done here is basically expand out this equation or this part of the equation into this form here. Now, to work out the power uh, dissipation in the full circuit, we basically multiply the V and the I together. So, this was the equation for the current. So, this is basically your I, which is this part here. And then your V is V naught as we have from this equation over here. Now just taking the real part from this, we basically end up with the, just this section here. So we get V naught squared multiplied by R divided by R squared plus one over omega squared and C squared. So this equation is the power dissipation for the entire circuit. Now let's look at the power dissipation of the resistor in this circuit. To do that, firstly, let's calculate the current that's going through the circuit, which is very similar to what we did before. So the current going through the circuit is the input voltage divided by the total reactance or the impedance of the circuit, which is equal to R plus uh, the impedance of the capacitor which we worked out before was J over minus J over omega C. So the equation for the current as before becomes V naught divided by R minus J over omega C. Now multiplying the top and the bottom by the conjugate, we get to this equation here, 
and this is all very similar to what we did before. What this equation is telling us is that the current going through this circuit is equal to V0 divided by R plus J omega C. Next, we need to find the resistor voltage, which is the voltage drop across this resistor here. So the voltage drop using Ohm's law is obviously equal to I times R. And we worked out I in the previous question, which was V0 over R plus J omega C. And then R is just R, so we multi put the two together and we get this equation here. After that, we need to find the magnitude of the voltage. And we can do that by doing the square root of the squares on the imaginary and the real part. So we get the magnitude is equal to V0 times R divided by the square root of R squared plus uh, J squared divided by omega C squared. So J squared is obviously equal to uh, minus one, but in the absolute value, we can ignore that. So we get the voltage drop across the resistor as equal to this over here. After calculating the voltage drop of the, of the resistor, we can calculate the power dissipation of the resistor, which is equal to V squared over R. So this should be squared over here. So if we plug in all the numbers, so obviously we worked out what um, the magnitude of the voltage was in the previous question, uh, previous slide, and we need to divide that by R. So I've put the division by R over here, so we've got 1 over R, and then I've squared everything for the, the magnitude of the voltage. So we've got V squared times R squared. Now this will cancel with this one over here. So we get left with just the R. So we're cancelling the two with this over here. And all of that is divided by the square of the square root of R squared plus one over omega C squared. So obviously the square root and the square cancel to get R squared plus one over omega C squared. Now this is the equation that we were interested in. If you compare this equation to the equation that we found for the power dissipation in the full circuit, which was equal to this over here, we can see that they are the same. So what this is telling us is that the power dissipation of the resistor is equal to the power dissipation of the full circuit. So that means that all the power dissipated in this circuit is dissipated across the resistor. For part B of the question, we need to calculate the power for a series circuit with a 1 microfarad capacitor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor placed across a 115 volt RMS 60 hertz power line. We are going to use the equation that we derived previously and plug in the numbers that we have. So 115 volts goes into your V, we square that, the resistance is equal to one kilo ohm. So we've got one kilo ohm here and one kilo ohm squared over here. And then we replace the omega with two pi F, which is 60 Hertz. Obviously this omega is frequency in radians. And we have a square of that multiplied by the square of this capacitor. This gives us an output of 1.646 watts, which if you remember from our simulation earlier, is exactly equal to what we found with the simulation. So that is all I need to cover for this question. Thank you for watching. And obviously, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below.